that everyone make sure their cell phones are turned off for the duration of the meeting. And I'd like to ask the acting clerk to provide a report concerning matters discussed in the earlier closed session. Allison? Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, there was one item on the closed agenda this evening, and on that item, uh, the CAO provided council with an update on his 2020 performance goals and measures. Uh, just for the benefit of those watching online, all members of council are in attendance either remotely or within the council chambers. Thank you. We have uh, no delegations this evening and we have no presentations. And we have two public notices which I'll ask the acting clerk to review. Uh, first uh, annual notice reminds people of the types of plants that can be planted at the Dryden Cemetery. Public is also requested to remove worn, broken and out of season decorations from the cemetery uh, by no later than April 30th, after which time they'll be removed and disposed of by the city. The second uh, uh, public notice is another annual public notice, uh, which is in two parts. The first is to remind the public that they are to clean up after their dogs and the city appreciates cooperation and assistance of the public in keeping dried and clean. And we ask that you carry a plastic bag when you're walking your pet so that you can remove the waste from public property immediately. Second part of this notice is to remind the public that no signs are permitted on any public utility poles and that it is a violation under the Highway Traffic Act to post signs on any traffic signal including traffic light standards, stop signs and speed limit signs. Uh, the city appreciates the cooperation of the public to ensure public utility poles and traffic signs and signals remain free of any unauthorized signage including garage sale, yard sale, yard sale, and event type signs. These unauthorized signs pose a serious safety hazard and a litter issue within the city. For both of these items, anyone who contravenes the rules is guilty of an offense and upon conviction is liable to a penalty as provided under the Provincial Offenses Act. Thank you. So we're now at Consent Agenda Part 1. General, and I would like to ask the acting clerk to conduct this section of the agenda. Okay, um, this part of this evening's agenda, there are several sets of minutes to be received and adopted, and one motion uh, to declare a piece of property surplus. I will um, review the items and ask if there are any that members would like to speak to or have severed for a separate vote. Under adopt receive minutes, we have the minutes of the uh, Kenora District Services Board meeting held January 16th to be received. We also have several sets of Council Committee of the Whole meeting minutes for adoption. These are the minutes of the Committee of the Whole meeting held February 10th, the minutes of the Council meeting held February 24th, the minutes of the Committee of the Whole meeting held March 9th, the minutes of a special Council meeting held March 14th, the minutes of a special council meeting held March 25th, and the minutes of a special council meeting held March 27th. Under motions arising from previous meetings, we have a motion to declare property at Five Skill and Crescent as surplus to the needs of the municipality so that it can be conveyed. Are there any of these items that members would like to speak to and or have severed for a separate vote? No. Okay, seeing none, I will look for a mover and a seconder for the consent agenda, please. I'll move. Councillor Price. I'll second. Sorry, who? Oh, Councillor Shane McKinnon, thank you. Uh, moved by Councillor Price and seconded by Councillor Shane McKinnon that Council hereby consider the following items of consent agenda part one general under the date of April 27, 2020, as read and adopted. 10 A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and 11 A. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. Thank you. Thank you. We're now at consent agenda part two, bylaws. And I would like to ask the acting clerk to conduct this section of the agenda. Okay. Um, we have several bylaws for adoption this evening under consent agenda part two. Uh, again, I'll review the bylaws. And when I'm done, I'll ask if there are any that anyone would like to speak to and or sever for a separate vote. Okay. Uh, bylaw 4710-2020 is a bylaw to amend the city's policy manual by combining three council travel policies into one as presented at an earlier committee of the whole meeting. I believe that was in March. 
Bylaw 4711-2020 is a bylaw to amend Chapter 72 of the City's Municipal Code by adding Schedule S, Highway Advertising Signs. Uh, this schedule was somehow missed last fall when Chapter 72 was updated, so it's just being added back into the list. Bylaw 4712-2020 is a bylaw to appoint an additional lottery licensing officer for the City of Dryden, and that would be uh, Ms. Arsenault in the administration office. Bylaw 4714-2020 reestablishes an economic diversification advisory committee. And this was presented by Mr. Peacock at the February council meeting. Bylaw 4722-2020 is a bylaw to amend the city's policy manual by adding the COVID-19 working from home policy as presented by Ms. Godden at the April committee of the whole meeting. Bylaw 4723-2020 amends the composition of the city's emergency <coughs> control group by adding Mayor Wilson and making councillors Shane McKinnon and Carlucci his designates. Bylaw 4724-2020 is to appoint Ms. Godden as an alternate community emergency management program coordinator for the city of Dryden. Bylaw 4725-2020 is a bylaw to authorize the execution of an agreement of purchase and sale between uh, the City of Dryden and Expedition Helicopters as presented at the April com Closed Committee of the Whole meeting. Bylaw 4726, 2020 is a bylaw to authorize the execution of an agreement between, between the Queen in right of Canada as represented by the Minister of Transport and the City of Dryden for the provision of funding under the Airport's Capital Assistance Program. And finally, we have bylaw 4727-2020, and that is the confirmatory bylaw for this evening's meeting. Uh, are there any of those bylaws that anyone would like to speak to and or have severed for a separate vote? Councillor Bush? I've, I've got four that I have questions on. I don't see any need for severing them, but I do have some, some questions. Um, Pretty straightforward answer, I would think. Okay. Uh, bylaw 4711 on the signed fee schedule, that's been in place since uh, 2018. So my, my question is, have, have the fee schedules, have the fees changed on the schedule? No. And secondly, just a, maybe a cleanup question, but why not? We're going to the trouble of putting this um, change in place. Why not make the schedule um, current to the current date to 2020 and, and not 2018. So that's the question on 4711. Okay, um, the first question, the answer was no. The second question, uh, if nothing changes, it always stays at the date that the fee was put in. So that one was in 2018. It was, it's the current rate that's in there. If there was to be an amendment, it would show the new rate. So, but it hasn't changed since 2018. So we're just, we're just, so the purpose of this bylaw then is, is to what? If it's already been in place, just for clarification. To catch it into the 2020 fees and charges bylaw. It was missed when uh, the whole bylaw was put in place last fall, and it was just determined that it was missing last month. And so just okay. to put it in, so it's the 2020 is current, this is just a catch up. Councillor Bush? Okay, all right. So it's just part of that big package that was there before. Yes. Okay, thank you. 4712, um, question on um, on the licensing, of lottery licensing officer. Is there much training required or certification, or what are the requirements for that position? Um, there's actually no real certification necessary. Uh, there is training required. Um, Basically would be that Ms. Arsenault would uh, back up Ms. Spielmacher in her absence uh, with handing out the applications and being able to take in the paperwork and review the, uh, the documentation that comes in from the uh, charitable organizations. It's, it's not a huge amount of uh, training required, but it will certainly make life a little bit easier in our office. Okay. Thank you. Um, 4726, 
authorizing the agreements between basically the Ministry of Transport and the city. Is there a term for this bylaw? Um, like how long is it in effect? Uh, the mayor has the agreement over in his desk. We can this find here? that out for you. It's the big pile. This, this one? Uh, oops, this thing here, actually. And while, while you're looking, yep. my, my question ahead. is, is this something that we have to renew or refresh on some frequency, or is it good for the term of council, or...? Uh, this is just for um, one... Oh, Roger. To your worship. Uh, Councillor Bush, that, uh, that agreement is for the uh, funding for the capital uh, uh, costs for uh, uh, the... Um, Piece of equipment out at the airport. I just had the equipment's left me left me here for a moment. Mm, I'm not actually even the sure compactor? The compactor. No airport. airport. Oh, the airport. Oh, the airport. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a one time. So once once the procurement is finished and, and we receive the uh, the equipment, then the the agreement That's is it. done. Okay, for a single purchase. Okay, thanks. Yeah. 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 Um, my, my last question is really on the confirmatory bylaw 4727. Um, again, maybe it's just my perception, but we always seem to be doing these statutory or confirmatory bylaws. And is there a term on this thing, or they always seem to be cropping up? What's it, the confirmatory bylaw happens at every council meeting, and it confirms everything that's done at the council meeting as if it were a bylaw. <laughs> even if it isn't a bylaw, if by some reason, or for some reason we missed doing an actual bylaw that needed one, the confirmatory bylaw covers that off. So it does occur at every council meeting. Okay, so it's a requirement for every council meeting to... It is best to practice. It is very much recommended as a best practice. Okay. Uh, I always wondered why we did that, so I'm, I'm glad to ask the question. Thank you. There you go. Education tonight. That's right. Learn something every day. That's why we're here. Yep. All right. Did anyone else have any other questions or comments on consent to? Shall I call right. for a mover sure. and a seconder? <laughs> Could I have somebody to move and second <laughs> the consent part two, please, the bylaws? Somebody to move? So moved. Councillor Marty Sorry, McKinnon. Marty. Someone to second. Second, please. Oh. Councillor McKay. Councillor McKay. Thank you. Okay, moved by Councillor Martin McKinnon, seconded by Councillor McKay, that Council consider Section 14 of the Consent Agenda Part 2 Bylaws under the date of April 27, 2020, which includes the following as read a first, second, and third time. Bylaw 4710-2020, Bylaw 4711-2020, Bylaw 4712-2020, Bylaw 4714-2020, Bylaw 4722-2020, Bylaw 4723-2020, Bylaw 4724-2020, Bylaw 4725-2020, Bylaw 4726-2020, and Bylaw 4727-2020. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Carried. Thank you. So we're now back to the regular agenda, which is out of consent. Each item on the regular agenda will be presented individually to Council. We have no staff report this evening. We have no notices of motion this evening. And we have three motions. And as I'm, uh, and Allison will take it away. <laughs> Once she catches up, she will, sure. Okay, so we have uh, three motions this evening. The first is a motion to appoint uh, Councillor Shane McKinnon to the Dryden Museum Advisory Board for the remainder of the term of council. Um, I believe he is aware of that. <laughs> and, uh, I, am now. <laughs> <laughs> I would need somebody to move and second that, please. I'll move it. Oh boy, everybody wants to do that. All right, I'll pick a body there. 18A, will be Michelle and Norm. Okay, uh, moved by Councillor Price, seconded by Councillor Bush, the Councillor Shane McKinnon be appointed to the Dryden Museum Advisory Board for the remainder of this <coughs> term of council. 
All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Carry. It's my mic. Okay. Uh, the second one is uh, the motion that, uh, gosh, I think that was put forward as a notice of motion back in February, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm guessing Councillor Shane McKinnon is going to want to move it. We will be looking for a seconder. This was the resolution censuring the conduct of Senator Bayak. So, uh, Councillor McKinnon, are you looking to move it? I'd uh, like to move that motion. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Oh, Councillor McKay would like to second that. i got to take a drink of water before I can read this, because this is three pages. Written very small. Okay, uh, moved by Councillor Shane McKinnon, seconded by Councillor McKay. Whereas the city of Dryden, known as the city, is a, municipally, is, mun is a municipality situated in what is now known as Northwestern Ontario, and whereas the city has a set has set a goal in its strategic plan of fostering positive relationships with Indigenous peoples, including the city's neighbouring First Nation communities, and whereas all levels of government in Canada are called upon to recognise and respond to the conclusions, factual findings, and calls to action of the 2015 Report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada, and whereas the city and many of its local institutions and organizations are taking steps to engage thoughtfully in the process of reconciliation, recognizing that many families and people of the region continue to be impacted by racism and the intergenerational legacy of colonial policies and Canada's residential school system. And whereas it is the responsibility of the city's council as local elected representatives to speak out on behalf of matters impacting its community members and whereas it is the responsibility of all political representatives for the city and its region to represent our community in a respectful, inclusive and honourable fashion and whereas municipal governments including that of Dryden must comply with the equality guarantees of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms and the anti-discrimination provisions of the Ontario Human Rights Code and municipal councillors must uphold the standards of conduct and integrity. And whereas Lynn Bayak was appointed to the Senate of Canada by the previous government in 2013 and is widely referred to and known as the Senator from Dryden, Ontario, and whereas the behaviour of Senator Bayak offends these aforementioned values, civic duties, and the honour of being a public official representing the people of Northwestern Ontario, and whereas Senator Bayak is unelected and will never face the electorate for her performance, which has become a reputational and social concern to the city, its region, and its citizens, and whereas on March 19, 2019, a report from the Senate's ethics officer concluded that Senator Bayak breached the Senate rules by posting letters on her Senate website that contained racist content, including letters that referred to First Nations people as milking the system, as using the history of residential schools as a crutch for handouts and otherwise cast doubt on the well-documented history of the residential schools as set out by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada. And whereas, to the Ethics Commission officer's report, the Senator stated that racism does not exist in Canada, that those who say racism exists are seeking to divide Canadians, and that the commissioners of the Truth and, Recrea <laughs> Truth and Reconciliation Commission engaged in reverse racism. And whereas Senator Bayak is ordered to remove the was ordered to remove the racist letters from her Senate website to make a formal apology for posting the letters and to complete a cultural sensitivity course with an emphasis on Indigenous issues. And whereas on March 9, 2019, Senator Bayak was suspended from the Senate for the remainder of the parliamentary term, which concluded with the general election held in October 2019. And whereas in early 2020, the Standing Committee on Ethics and conflict of interest for senators again recommended that Senator Bayak be suspended without pay for the remainder of the parliamentary session, citing her failure to complete anti-racism training or to deliver a sufficient apology for her actions, and whereas numerous media and reports have indicated that Senator Bayak falsely claimed that she was Métis, which she subsequently denied, 
during her anti-racism training session and that she stated in the training that there was no racism in Northwestern Ontario and made comments which perpetuated negative stereotypes about Indigenous people and whereas the board of the Northwestern Ontario Municipal Association, Grand Council Treaty No. 3, the Métis Na Nation National Council and numerous other Indigenous organizations have called for Senator Bayak to resign and whereas there continues to be racism evident in communities across Canada and Northwestern Ontario and it is the responsibility of all public officials to use their offices to eradicate it, not to deny its existence. And whereas the city and its region are in demographic and economic transition with a growing role for Indigenous people in governance, economic and cultural leadership, a change which much, must be purposefully fostered and celebrated, and whereas the Senator's actions are misrepresentative of the city's trajectory, its progress, and the relationships and image it wishes to build with its neighbours, and whereas there are many federal policy priorities that a Senator for a vast region like Northwestern Ontario could use her office to support, but evidently has not. Now therefore be it resolved that the city condemns the conduct of Senator Bayak that has given rise to these events and disavows any racist statements or publications made or promoted by the Senator, particularly as they have come to be attributed to the city, and further that the city takes exception to Senator Bayak representing the city in any way or speaking on behalf of or for the community in any f official forum or publication, and further that the city calls for the Senator to immediately resign her position and offer a comprehensive apology to Canadians, and in particular, Indigenous Canadians, and further that the clerk in, of the city cause this resolution to be forwarded with a cover letter to all municipalities and representative bodies for the Métis people of Northwestern Ontario, all Treaty Number 2 Gra First Nations and Grand Council Treaty Number 3, all members of Provincial Parliament and members of Parliament for Northwestern Ontario, the Senate, Senate Ethics Officer, the members of the Senate's Standing Committee on Ethics and Conflict of Interest, and the Speaker of the Senate. Comments, questions, anyone? Councillor Shane McKinnon. Thank you, uh, Your Worship, uh, members of council and the community. I find myself repeatedly offended by the conduct of Senator Lynn Bayak and feel a strong sense of duty in bringing this resolution forward. The resolution details the actions of the Senator, so I do not intend to go into the facts, but since this resolution was put forward, as a matter of fact, the day after this resolution was put forward, the Senator publicly admitted and offered an apology for what she had said in, in posting uh, letters on her Senate website. Uh, I'll quote the Senator. Um, they were disrespectful, divisive, and unacceptable. So there is no doubt that what she said was wrong and in ordinary circumstances, we would accept her apology and move on. But there are several, several irritating factors here that cannot be ignored. Her prolonged belief that her public opinion on residential schools was not hateful or hurtful, her refusal to remove racist letters from her website, even after being removed from caucus, being suspended and facing further sanctions, again, as outlined in the resolution. It would be easy for this council to suggest that the Senate Ethics Committee is handling this situation with another suspension and conditions being placed upon the Senator, so no further action is necessary. It is also arguable that the Senate, if they had the power, would have already removed Senator DeBea from the Red Chamber permanently. I believe that the actions of the Senator have been more harmful to our community and region than to the rest of our country. The fact that the Senator purports herself to be a voice for our community and has publicly stated that no racism exists in our region is not only false, but it flies in the face of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report, as well as the many experiences of our citizens. Many of us on council are lifelong residents of this community and have witnessed systemic as well as targeted acts of racism. But now I am proud to say 
that we stand shoulder to shoulder in our efforts to reverse those acts and fight racism in Dryden. A testament to this action is contained in our strategic plan, where we have committed to a strategic priority which states, continue to foster positive relationships with Indigenous peoples and neighbouring First Nation communities. This strategy has been undertaken repeatedly by our CAO and the staff of the City of Dryden, and I, for one, am very proud and grateful to you all. We have an anti-racism organization in our community, and perhaps the most active and progressive Indigenous centres and organizations in the region. It is our responsibility to demonstrate to our community, in particular, our urban Aboriginal population, along with our Indigenous neighbours and the rest of the country, that we will not tolerate racism. Therefore, I am asking Council support for this resolution and to call for Senator Lynn Bayak to resign from her position as Senator. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Bush? Oh, Can't you, hear you. You're on mute. I can't hear. Mr. Mayor, can you there. hear me now? There. Now we can hear, yep. All right. I presume you're going to call for a vote? Yes. Um, could I request a recorded vote, please? And I do have some comments. All right. Um, we'll just go around. Councillor McKay, do you, do you want to? something to say yes. Sure. Um, I support this motion as presented to council because those of us who undertake elected office or are political appointees must understand that our words and actions have impact. Uh, I feel as a councillor we have an obligation and a responsibility to ensure that all people feel welcome and safe in our community. Thank you. All right, thank you. So your vote We'll no, sir. Later. Okay. So, Councillor Martin McKinnon. Well, what are you asking of me? Any comments? Questions? Any comments? No, I, nope. I've, I've decided. Uh, I've decided on on how I will vote. So let's let's okay. just get to the vote. Okay. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so it is a recorded vote. So I will go around the alphabetically, not even around the room, I guess. Um, and Councillor Bush, how would you vote? Support or Okay. Um, I'm going to vote with a comment. Uh, people obviously have strong feelings about this motion, and I'm no exception. Personally, I have to say that from my perspective as a councillor, this motion has no place at a municipal council table. In no way, shape, or form is this city business and just because councillor mckinnon and uh, councillor mckay you want to make it city business and say it should be it doesn't make it so any code of conduct or ethical issues surrounding a canadian senator is clear the federal government and canadian senate issue full stop as private citizens we're obviously free to express ourselves to whatever government body or representatives we so desire regarding their actions and behaviors. But it's not the business of the city to say what action should be taken against a senator, federal politician, or provincial politician. Likewise, the actions or behaviors of a city councillor or the mayor are not the business of either the federal or provincial governments. We have our own Council Code of Conduct that establishes behavioral standards and norms and adjudicates complaints. Every level of government is responsible for managing the behaviors and actions of their members, and it is up to them to make changes to their policies, procedures when required. Through the chair, I'd like to ask um, Madam Clerk to verify that abstaining from voting on a motion or resolution is that recorded as a no vote? That would be considered a no vote, yes. 
So I fully recognize that by abstaining, that that's recorded as no vote. I have to say that I am not prepared to debate the vote yes or no on the motion to censor Senator Bayak, nor would I be prepared to vote on a similar motion to censor our Prime Minister, who three times has broken the ethics committee rules, the ethics of the, of the federal parliament. I am going to abstain on the basis that this motion should not be before Council and should not be debated by Council. My abstention is essentially a no vote to presenting this motion to Council. And again, from my perspective, we have many more important issues to deal with as a Council, such as the three murders tied to drug problems in and around our community in the past couple of years. I think our efforts could be better focused on minding our own backyard than trying to get into federal or provincial politics. And that's really all I have to say on the matter, Mr. Mayor, and so I'm abstaining for the vote for the reasons noted. And I'd like the minutes of the meeting to reflect that I have abstained because I feel that this is not council business. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Carlucci. Um, thank you. Um, my initial reaction was not to react or comment on this motion in Council Chambers. It's now on the floor and it needs to be dealt with. This is the Senate ethics issue. Comments made by Senator Bayak are not comments I would have made, considering my or anyone's position in political life. She has apologized, as Councillor uh, Shamekin mentioned. She has said it was disrespectful, divisive, and unacceptable. So two ways of taking that. We in Council make decisions that have an outcome that we can control in most cases. And this motion, in my opinion, will not have any effect or achievable outcome. Being elected officials, we have governance, processes, and policies that we have to adhere to. So do other forms of government, including the Senate. The Senate Ethics Committee has started the process in regards to Senator Bayak, and that process that they have put in place must be respected, and it must go forward to whatever outcome it is. I, as a councillor, have no control over that outcome. Only Senator Bayak can control her actions and future outcome. Therefore, I do not support the motion that has so many, in my mind, assumptions and should have been, in my opinion, a citizen petition, not a committee council motion. So I support now. No. Thank you, Councillor Martin McKinnon. Okay, my, my vote on this will be to uh, uh, to abstain myself from voting, that is strictly based on the fact that I believe that this is a federal government issue and should be dealt with by the federal government. If their, their way of dealing with it is, is weak, that's their problem. They should be fixing the problems they have at their level. Uh, I'll go as far as to say that the, the Senate has become archaic and it's time it moved on too. So. They have more issues than just the, the fact that we're dealing with with this kind of uh, a deal with with a senator. As a personally, we we can think what we want about life and and the situation we live in in Dryden. As a counselor, I, I support all indigenous activities, and I will till my dying breath. So that being said, I believe that this issue belongs with the federal government and it is theirs to deal with, so I have to abstain. Okay, thank you. Councillor Shane McKinnon. Mike is on. Yes, for the uh, reasons that I've already uh, articulated, I vote yes. Councillor McKay? Uh, yes. Councillor Price? Um, so, um, for well, for the last little while now, since Jane brought this forward, or Councilman Kinson, uh, McKinnon has uh, brought this motion forward, it's been on the, the front of my mind. And um, um, I first want to state the obvious. I feel Mrs. Bayek's comments, um, they don't re represent our community. I uh, speak only for myself. I do believe good, uh, um, no good came from a residential school. I don't believe that. Her words are true. Um, I hope that, um, you know, it is my belief that she 
Mrs. Bayak is not from Dryden. Her words are not the voice of this community. She is not a counselor of the city of Dryden, therefore does not represent the voice of the city of Dryden. Um, I, for myself, as uh, Councilman Marty McKinnon has said, um, I will continue to concentrate on making our community a better place to live in and raise a family for all people. I will continue to educate myself and those close to me on matters relating to racism, and I will leave it up to the Senate to make the right choice on Mrs. Bayak's future career with the Senate. So with that, I, I am um, voting no. Thank you. Mayor Wilson. So what, what saddens me is that this, this topic is so politically divisive and the Senate, apart from the House of Commons, is not above political chicanery, right? So uh, for two, two points that, that have already been mentioned, one is that it, it really wouldn't accomplish anything and two, it's, it's kind of above my pay grade. Uh, this is really a federal issue and I prefer to focus on the affairs of the city rather than discuss these politically divisive matters that really shouldn't be in our in our uh, municipal court here so and I like the uh, uh, after hearing about the abstention uh, I think it's a good idea to just say that I abstain as well okay which is a no uh, which brings our total to two yes and five no so the motion has been defeated All right, moving on to the last item on this section, which is a motion that I'm going to guess uh, that Mayor Wilson is going to move. And in that case, I'm going to ask uh, Councillor uh, McKay, who is unaware that this is going to be happening, to um, chair this portion of the meeting. The mayor is going to move this item and we'll need a seconder. Um, but you'll just, you'll play the mayor's role in this part, okay? Okay. Okay. So the only thing that I'm just wondering about is if, if I'm going to enter the debate, then I can choose to step down, right? Yes. So yes. I'm so not we'll, choosing to enter the debate. You're not going to enter the debate? No. Nope. Um, but if you're going to move the motion or place the motion on the table, you have to, you can't sign We're, off at the end. Yeah, so <laughs> however you... you okay. Know. We're going to do it my, going to do it my way. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> Um, so uh, I need someone to second, oh sorry? S somebody? Somebody? I have uh, declared a conflict of yes. interest on this matter, so I don't know if you want to mute my mic at that end or if I just you can sit mute. here. We can't <laughs> mute you, so you'll have to mute yourself. Okay, so, thank you. Yes, Councillor Shane McKinnon has uh, earlier declared a conflict of interest on this as he's uh, part of the board of the health unit. Um, this uh, item is a reconsideration of a resolution passed by Council on uh, February 24th regarding uh, the health unit. So the mayor is going to move uh, this motion to reconsider. Can I have someone to second it, please? Councillor Price, thank you. All righty. So it's moved by uh, Mayor Wilson, seconded by Councillor Price. Uh, whereas the City of Dryden's concerns regarding the financial hardship that the current and future projected increases from the Northwestern Health Unit pose to the City remain, and whereas the City of Dryden recognizes the priority and importance of the current COVID-19 crisis, now, therefore, be it resolved that the City of Dryden Council rescind resolution number 17 of the February 24th, 2020 meeting of Council, which read in part, now, therefore, be it resolved that the City of Dryden Council hereby authorize the City of Dryden Treasurer to remit to the Northwestern Health Unit only a total of 2020 Northwestern Health Unit levy payment amount equal to the health unit's 2019 levy fees as the health unit seeks out other sources of revenue or cost reductions in 2020, allowing it to balance its budget without passing cost increases on to municipalities. Hi. And now Councillor McKay is going to ask if there are any comments. Oh. Uh, <laughs> is there, are there any comments? Councillor Carlucci. Uh, through the chair, just my comment is I, I, I'll, I'll accept the rescinding of the motion. I just don't want to take our foot off the gas at the end of the day that if down the road we can have a healthy discussion with Northwest Health Unit 
um, that should be done because I still think that uh, we're paying a lot more than uh, we can afford. So that's my comment. Thank you, Councillor Carlucci. All right, do you want to call for the vote then? Uh, oh, Councillor Bush. Oh. Yes, uh, thank you through the chair. I agree with Councillor uh, Carlucci's comments as well that uh, this is uh, basically providing one year of uh, focused relief between the two organizations so that they can that we can effectively deal with COVID-19 but the same issues that uh, we had last year are present going forward. Hopefully this uh, one year extension by the provincial government in terms of uh, implementing the full uh, impact of these transfers will allow both parties the time to work this issue and uh, come together and have some better discussions than we've been able to manage over the past year. So I would support it on that basis. Councillor Price. And I agree with uh, Councillor Bush and um, Councillor Carlucci on the same grounds that um, um, we definitely can't let this set and uh, we need to start dealing with it now so that we are ready for 2021 and um, um, to let the health unit know that we desperately can't afford to, um, to have these continued hikes in, in uh, rates. Okay, so. So a question of order. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't there for the original vote. Does that, uh, do I, can I vote on this at, at this time? I wasn't there, I was at Oberick during the original vote. Yes, you just are not able to uh, place the motion on the floor. Okay, which thank you. Which you not do. So I guess we'll vote now? Yeah. So how do you vote? All in favor? Four. All in favor? Four. Aye. There you go. Thank you. Was anyone opposed? No. No, okay, thank you. And uh, Councillor Shane can turn his mic back on if he so desires. And the mayor is back in the chair. All right, so uh, senior managers present the reports, CAO. Uh, through your worship, thank you. Uh, I have a, a few uh, comments or uh, items to report on tonight. Uh, first off, though, my uh, sincerest and most heartfelt condolences go out to the victims, families and friends uh, impacted by the tra tragedy out in uh, Nova Scotia. Uh, just uh, a few comments on our continued uh, municipal COVID response. Um, as Council uh, knows, our non-essential facility closures continue and, uh, and will continue at least into the uh, immediate future. We continue to uh, restrict public access to all, uh, all of our facilities. Uh, to date, about 37 employees have been uh, uh, impacted by layoffs due to those, those uh, closures and, and service curtailments. Uh, we have another uh, almost 20 employees working from home uh, to further uh, uh, strengthen our, our position on employee health and safety during, uh, during this time. Uh, we continue to, to meet, uh, our emergency control group continues to meet weekly uh, at this point and uh, we've included uh, multiple uh, partner agencies uh, within the community in that, uh, in that weekly meeting uh, where we uh, uh, provide updates and, and discuss further actions required. Uh, and one, one last announcement, and, and this is a, this is a, a good news announcement. Uh, after 30 years of service, uh, Mrs. Colleen uh, Barrasso will be retiring. Um, she's uh, she spent uh, a lot of time uh, in the administration department here in, in City Hall as our municipal clerk, and then moving on to uh, human resources department, and uh, she'll be actually retiring from, uh, from a position out at... Uh, Dryden Regional Airport. So we wish her a very long and healthy uh, retirement and, uh, and all the best to her. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Clerk. Um, no, I don't. I think you've heard enough from me tonight. Thank oh, you. Okay, sure. Uh, Public Works, is Blake on? Nothing this evening, Your Worship. 
Okay, thank you. And uh, Manager of Community Services, Steve? Uh, good evening, uh, Your Worship and members of Council. Um, just quick update on uh, through the shutdown, of course, we are closed. It's given us a, a nice opportunity to really tackle some of the projects we haven't been able to um, over the course of our short shutdowns that usually take place between May, June, July before we're back in action. So. Uh, all of our um, pool shut activities were front loaded, brought up, you know, during the past month, and uh, a lot of good work done there. We're excited to uh, let people back into the building. We just got a little bit more signage and some flooring to install at the weight room and uh, over on the arena side. Um, keeping in mind, we're trying to keep the building readily available in case it needs to be used or accessed by the public for any number of reasons. Uh, still working on a lot of projects, but making sure that that building is available. Um, number of projects planned for Milestone, Rotary Park, and Sandy Beach, just waiting for the frost to come out and the ground to settle before we move over there. Um, community Services Department continues to be in contact with our uh, user groups who would normally use our fields, um, soccer fields, baseball fields, and, and even uh, Milestone Rink to see what uh, a shortened or abbreviated season may look like if we get to that point where actually uh, we have that opportunity to be able to proceed. <laughs> Just trying to prepare that way and uh, as we're aware my lift continues to operate our uh, my lift drivers recently won peer-to-peer -peer award congratulations to them um, and during that reduced ridership we're continuing to look at ways where, uh, where uh, my lift may be able to assist the community and that being through meals on wheels or for directions no one's taken us up on that offer yet but uh, the door is certainly open for them that's all i have great thanks steve uh, i think it's Appropriate. We have a moment of silence right now as Roger was alluding to the Nova Scotia tragedy. Thank you. Uh, I have uh, I sent an email out to to some of the staff and as well as council uh, today, and it was uh, the subject heading was three cheers for public works staff. So I just wanted to uh, share this with the public. What's behind that? I received a text from a citizen, and because it's a good news story, I can mention her name. It's Dana Leonzio. And uh, she wanted, I just wanted to share this with you, what she wrote. She said, good morning, Greg, it's Dana. I am smiling. I was on my way home from a quick grocery shop when I saw the town vehicle stopped at the side of the road. The workers were picking the garbage out of the ditches. I try to maintain the stretch of road between our turnoff and the mill bridge. I have done this for years now. Uh, I recently picked up four bags of garbage and was just finishing when someone on the way to the dump drove past with an unsecured load and dropped a large box of loose stuff that just blew all over. I was so disheartened. It normally looks great for at least a couple of days and here I was just finishing and it looked like I hadn't even started. I wasn't even sure I'd bother going again. So you can imagine the joy I felt seeing the stretch being maintained. I will make sure to do it again, but now I feel like part of a team. Thank you. And please extend a thank you to the town employees. So Dana, you've been heard and uh, hopefully all the, the municipal employees that are, that are involved in these sort of things um, are hearing this. And uh, it reminds me of Tommy Jones' mantra. I've shared it with the public before. I see it, I pick it up. You see it, you pick it up. It's a good mantra. And I'd just like to add, yes, shame on all of you litter bugs out there, but thanks to all you unsung citizen heroes who pick up public litter. So thanks and keep it up. Uh, Councillor uh, Shane McKinnon, do you have uh, any comments tonight? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I have uh, uh, three comments. Uh, the first is a reminder that April 28th, tomorrow, is Canada's National Day of Mourning for workers killed or injured uh, on the job. And of course, this year, I think of all the frontline hospital workers, essential workers, please stay safe. And uh, if we think thank you for all that you do. Uh, secondly, uh, I want to thank the entire emergency operations control group under the uh, leadership of our CAO, Roger Nesbitt, 
Um, I realize that we're not clear of the uh, danger of COVID-19 and may not be for months, uh, even years, but the preparations by the city and our partner agencies should let residents of Dryden and area sleep a little better at night. So thank you all. And lastly, I just want to add my congratulations to Colleen Brasso. I worked with Colleen for uh, uh, many years, uh, sat at many uh, meeting tables with her. Uh, congratulations and uh, enjoy your new life as a retiree, Colleen. Great, thank you. Uh, Councillor Martin McKinnon. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of comments. First, I, I uh, would also like to congratulate Colleen Brasso on, uh, on her 30 years of service to the City of Dryden and, uh, and thank her for, for the years that I've been a councillor and, and she's always been a wonderful resource. A good, smart lady that the city will truly miss no matter what she was doing. So have a good one, Colleen. Secondly, I'd like to uh, thank Public Works too. I've had a number of interactions with them uh, over the past couple of weeks over holes in the road and and uh, cutting on the side of the roads and, and uh, snow piles. And, and the response has always been wonderful. And my last comment goes out to all the employees that work for the city of Dryden and those folks that are are uh, working their butts off behind the scenes and and sitting in offices and doing the things that need to be doing to keep our community well and healthy and safe and getting a, getting those good facilities we've got out there ready to roll for when we can stock them up with people again so thank you thank you you folks really appreciate you all right thank you uh, Councillor Price. Um, yes, um, I just want to mention that I've had uh, several calls of concerns from uh, small businesses related to regarding financial help from the government. Uh, there are many businesses that at this time that do not fall into the guidelines for avail available funding or any type of loan. Um, and they're worried on now or if they will survive. I understand the government is still rolling out um, plans for financial aid to small businesses that are not qualifying for any um, for any help. My hope is that this is uh, sooner than later. Um, also, I would like uh, our community members to remember our small businesses uh, that when they do reopen, that remember to shop local. Remember, it is the local businesses that are there to support our community in times of uh, requests for donations and funding and whatnot. Um, lastly, I want to also thank our wonderful, beautiful community for doing their part on flattening the curve. I know it's not easy to stay away from family and loved ones, uh, especially now that it's starting to warm up. But with your continued support, we'll get through this uh, safe and healthy. And with that, I um, also want to send a big congratulations out to Colleen. I uh, did work with her in the 90s as well, and uh, she is a wonderful person and is well deserving of her retirement. Uh, so enjoy, Colleen. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, Councillor Bush. Yes, uh, thank you. Through the chair, um, I know there's a lot of stress out there in the community right now with what we're going through, but I have to say I continue to be impressed by how our citizens and businesses are coping with the COVID-19 restrictions. And I can appreciate with the weather getting better, that's going to be more and more difficult as it draws people outside. A little easier staying in when it's uh, blustery and blowy and minus 10, but that's changing right now. Also, I have had a, had a couple of comments about public works, and uh, everybody's happy to see the street sweeper out there, and glad that that machine allows for some good social distancing, but um, nice to see the early uh, cleanup on the streets. And finally, I didn't uh, get too much of an opportunity to work with Colleen, although I did uh, initially when she was... Uh, around City Hall at the beginning of my first term. But Colleen, all the best on your retirement, and I'm sure Kent and Rammer and the rest of your family is very happy for you, and we just wish you all the best. Thank you. All right, thank you. And Councillor McKay, last word. Uh, to the chair, yeah, I, I want to hitch my wagon to the, all my fellow councillors' comments. They were all <laughs> well-spoken. Thank you. All right, thank you.
We need someone to motion for adjournment. Yes, Who's... could I have someone move and oh. oh. Price, boy, we need oh, to get yeah. the words out. Uh, <laughs> Councillor Martin McKinnon, are you seconding? I did. All righty. <laughs> Thought so. Uh, moved by Councillor Price, seconded by uh, Councillor Martin McKinnon that this meeting do hereby adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried. Aye. Adjourned. Good night. Have a good night, folks. Good night. <laughs>